Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to use the springs pave between two curves and how to use the cathedral template. All right, open up a new file. And within the template, you can just left click inside and press the letter C to navigate to the cathedral template and give it a name. Okay, first let's bring in a stone and put in a halo to get it started. I'm going to Gem Settings, Play Stones. I'm going to bring in a cushion, and we'll just keep it simple. We'll just make 10 millimeter long sim uh, uh, cushion. And we'll bring in a halo plus the stone. And we'll use a square shape. And we'll uh, edit. We'll tweak it so it's on a uh, angle. And we use a little bit bigger stones. Okay, so the length we want to keep, the length and width. The diamond size, the melee size, let's go 1.5. So we have a little bit more room. Let's go a half a millimeter on each side. Let's go 2.5. The gem inlay depth. That's fine, 0.3, the inside height, make it taller so we have a little bit of an angle. I'm gonna apply that and okay it. Okay, I'm gonna press the letter Q to merge it. I'm gonna press the letter M to move the stone up higher. Just left clicking in that tag, we'll raise it up a millimeter. Okay, so now let's edit the cathedral template. Shift right click, select sketch. Right click on top of the cathedral template, edit sketch. Okay, so we wanna bring this, we're gonna loft a profile a shank outside. So I want to bring this down. We'll edit this. And we'll start here. We're going to bring it tighter. And then we're going to bring this a little bit tighter inside. Let's go clean 4.5. And then we're going to give it more curvature. Something like that. I want to bring it down a little further yet. That'll be fine. Okay, so let me just show you the dimensions that you can play with. This one here affects your curvature. This one here will bring the shank tighter together or further apart. This one here will raise the height of your uh, your shank. Okay, I'm going to right click exit the sketch. I'm going to blank the halo. Shift right click, shape, right click, blank. I'm going to regenerate. I see my datums out here. It should be attached. I need to regenerate my, my uh, history. Okay, so now it's attached. Now we'll bring in some profiles. If you want to make them by hand, it's up to you. I'm going to, for the purposes of this demo, I'm going to use something that's pre-existing. Okay. Shift, right click. Sketch, right click on the sketch, edit the sketch. Okay, so at the top, I'm going to make it taper down bigger on the bottom. So I'm going to make the top four millimeter wide. 
I'm going to make it two millimeters high. I'm going to change my angle to 90 degrees here. And I'm going to have this one match this side. So whatever that side is, the left side will automatically change. And there we go. We could always come in and later on uh, modify it at any time. I'm going to do the same on the bottom. Right click edit on top of the sketch. Well, I'll keep it six millimeters wide. I want to modify this to 90. And again, I want this one to be whatever the right side is. So I'm right clicking on top. I'm not changing it manually here. I'm pressing this icon and telling the tool, I want you to copy whatever's over here. So, okay, so if we ever make changes here, that will follow. I'm going to make this one millimeter. And I'm going to make this here. Oh, we'll go about 1.6. And I'm going to exit the sketch. Okay, I'm going to go on my bridge here. And I'm going to edit that. We'll go three millimeter. One. And we'll kick this up to two. Could always change it. Right click, exit the sketch. Okay. Well, I suspect I'm going to. I'm not going to want that, but we'll leave it for now. I'm going to mirror this sketch across the side plane, and we'll loft. I'm going to press the letter one, uh, the number one on the keyboard, drive curve. This is my drive curve. That's my first profile. I'm going down to the bottom, my second, and my third. Okay. I'm picking the outer part of the profile close to the left side on all of them. And I'll OK the command. OK, now let me unblank with my halo. And I want to trim this shank perfectly to this bottom face. So I'm going to grab my trim tool. My base is the shank. My trimming is shift right click face. We're going to pick that face and the arrows pointing down. That's what I want to keep. Okay, so now I'm dead on perfectly clean. Okay, so you got a little taste of playing with the cathedral shank, uh, the cathedral template. Now we're going to come in and we'll do our springs between two curves. First, I want to isolate an area of the shank where I want to put this pave. So I'm going to right click, insert a sketch on the front view plane. I'm going to right click draw, and I'm going to pick any area outside of this the ring shank, and I'm drawing two lines, and I'm going to right-click to mention this. We'll give it a clean 60 degrees. I'm going to right-click on top, mirror this to the other side. I'm going to turn the center line into construction geometry because I only want these two faces live. I'm going to freeform tab. And I'm going to choose split with curves. I want to split this face, middle click, with this sketch. We're going to project it down the Y axis. And now you see it's split. OK. So we could put the pave on the outside of this. That's fine. Or uh, we can create a little recess little inlay with a bright cut. But the first thing I want to look at here is, well, I suspect I'm going to probably want to 
soften up on these edges. So I'm going to make my top profile a little bit a little bit uh, smaller. So I'm going to right click on sketch 17, edit the sketch. Pick that, it was highlighted, right? So I'm going to come down here and I'll make this about 1.75. Right click, exit the sketch, and it rebuilt. So I have a little bit more room. I want to put a fill in here to soften up that edge. Something like that. We'll put one on the inside. Okay. All right, so let's create a little recess here. This is just one way of many. I'm going to go into the Freeform tab. I'm going to change the color. I'm going to go into the Freeform tab, and I'm going to offset this surface. And I want it to go zero distance. And I want to keep the original surface. Okay. I'm going to blank this out. Shift right click shape. Blank. I'm going to shape toolbar. Thicken. I want to thicken this. A millimeter is fine on the outside. And then we're going to move it inside. Okay. I'm going to press the letter F on the keyboard. And do a face offset. And I want to bring it inwards, oh, about 0.3 or so, 0.3. I'm going to put a bright cut on it. We'll put a bright cut here. And these edges here. And OK to command. I'm going to right click blank entities on blank all. I'm not worried about the left side. We'll just cut it in half and mirror it. So I'm going to remove shape. So this is our Boolean subtraction. OK, so now we have a little inlay in here. OK, I'm going to trim this in half with this datum. Okay, so we'll just work over here. All right, now I'm going to come in with my pave spring between two curves. Pave spring between two curves. And I'm going to play very carefully. First, I want to be sure these two are set to touch curve. I'm going to left click in my curve A. I'm going to pick at the top. My curve B, I'm going directly across from A, and I'm going to pick on that side. My surface, I'm going to left click. Okay, now, I got 10 points. Now I want you to come in and start to play with this. You got two rows. We want three rows, okay? Two rows isn't, it's not sufficient for something like this. So we got three rows. 120, this is, you know, how much we're going to scale this part. Let's just leave this for now. We're liable to change it later on. And uh, our distance, this is our distance between the stones, our stiffness, and shrink. So we'll just come in and play a little bit and just observe the behavior of the tool. Until you get what you want, just play. Just play very gingerly. Don't don't jump with big numbers. Make sure you right click and you have your step size even finer than a one. Go to a tenth, point one. Okay, and then when you get something you like, in this case I'm going to elevate it slightly. I'm going to go point zero five off the surface to compensate for the curvature, and that looks decent. That's acceptable. I'll approve the command. That's it. Again, when you work with this tool, go very slowly. 
use fine increments on your step size. So now everything else is going to be all the common tools that you should know if you don't. Go into the uh, academy and look up, you know, how to uh, put your prongs on your pave or do your gems between the two curves. I'll do it right here real fast for the top. Here, here. I'll elevate it slightly. And we'll put in 50. It's not going to be 50, but we'll just put in 50 and we'll spread the stones. Okay. Gem settings. We'll put in uniform prongs on our feature. And when you work with this, go in your distance. This is recognizing the total prong, uh, the amount of material being removed from the prong. So 50% of this prong is being removed, which means you got 25% on this side and this side. So if you don't like 50%, you know, lower it, make it something about 30%. And after you do that, you're going to want to come into your distance and roll it, with roll your middle mouse button and kick it up so you get a bigger size. Now only 25 is being chewed into. You got 12 and a half on each side. You're good. Okay to command. And now put in a bright cut. Save your set of some time. Okay, bring in your cutters. I'll just use a pilot on this feature. I'll change my elevation. I already raised it up, so I'm going to go down inside more. And I'll OK to command. And now I'm going to come in and do a subtraction. I don't need to edit the cutter. I'll leave it as is. Merge cutters. Pick them. Merge and remove from this part. Okay. So I'll just hide my stones for a minute so you can see how it was cut into. Okay, and that's, that's the most important part of this. I'll create a rendering so you can see what it looks like, but... Same strategy over here. Put in your prongs, put in your your uh, cutters, and mirror everything to the other side. If you're using components, use tool cutters and use the mirror components tool. Okay, I hope it was helpful. If you have any questions, email us at support at jewelrycatdream.com. Thank you.